Alright, if you've uh, tuned into this video, you're probably having the same problem I did with your Kenmore Elite HE3 or HE2 or some similar model or any other washing machine that is having the same problem I had where you're finding your clothes sitting in a puddle of water not having drained or rinsed and or you're getting an F02 or F01 or F25 or any other F code pertaining to an issue with the pump. It's also referred to as a, a SUDS error code. If that's the case, you might find online that it's going to direct you immediately to a new pump. But don't do that. Repairmen are very expensive. The pumps aren't cheap and hard to find some of the time online. Before you go that route, watch this video. I tried to make it as quick and painless as I can by going through every single step. There's a couple of steps in this video that I've only found talked about in obscure blogs, but no videos showing the step-by-step -step procedure of what to clean. A lot will describe cleaning out the coin catch, which is usually the go-to fix but not many others go into detail after that if the coin catch wasn't your problem. So we're going to start by removing the bottom panel and it's just two small screws, one in there, one on the other side and just unclips from the ridge here and you'll have that bottom panel out exposing the pump and coin catch. We'll start there in my next video. Before we move on to the next clip, one thing that I forgot to mention in the preceding videos is that when you have this panel removed, which by the way is three screws, I realize I had mentioned two but there's a third middle screw once it's removed you'll find a manual taped to the inside right panel here and it's not the manual you got when you bought the machine it's it's a repair manual of sorts it'll list all of your error codes and the reason you got them and some troubleshooting tips so feel free to open that up and have a look just to confirm with your specific error code all right, first to drain, I learned the hard way, water will come out of the coin catch when you unscrew it, more than you'd imagine. And it runs down into your machine along the channels and spreads out all over the floor. It's hard to catch, no Pyrex dish or bucket is wide enough to contain it. So second time around, I removed this screw right here and you'll see there's a footing there and a footing there and you just have to pull it and angle it, wiggle it out and it comes loose just enough for you to reach in and angle this down. We also unclipped, it's just pinch tabs here on either side just so this would be free and I wouldn't damage any wiring that's in force. That gives you the option to pull this up and over and really tilt this guy down and best prop it up on some blocks and then slide the Pyrex dish underneath. You can open up halfway control the flow, close when it's time to drain the Pyrex dish and repeat. And with this angled down, you'll have no spillage whatsoever. I put a towel down just to be safe, but no spillage at all. All right, now that you've removed both clamps off the back of the pump, 
you have the pump. There's the coin catch, and this is the actual pump. A lot of people are saying that this is all sold as one piece, but you can't find on Amazon just the pump itself. And there's four screws. I've unscrewed it. To save time, and once it unscrews, you have access to clean out in the sink. Unscrew the door and rinse out, wash out the coin catch completely. And the only thing to clean on the pump is the rotary blades here. Mine had a little bit of gunk around it, not too much. So I don't think the coin catch or a clogged pump motor was my issue. And now that the hoses are disconnected, we're gonna slide it out, remove the back panel, and we'll be able to follow this drain hose all the way up to the top, detach it from the other end, and remove that so we can clean that out thoroughly in the sink with a brush, a snake, and a cloth, run it right through. And here as well, the boot and the ball that's inside of it We'll have full access, take it out, rinse it all in the sink, see what kind of gunk is in there as well. Because people are saying that was their problem, that there was lots of gunk either in the boot causing an obstruction or tons of gunk all the way up the drain hose. All right, see you in the next video. The next thing you're going to want to drain, rinse out, clean out, will be the water drain hose that runs up from the pump and out the exterior drain hose that drains into your, your sink or your wash basin. You'll be removing it from the pump like we had already demonstrated in the previous video and there's one more clamp right here with some pliers pinch that this whole elbow comes off I've already removed it it's reinstalled now simple you take it into your laundry sink and you clean all this gunk. I ran a cloth through it. I had a snake wire. Uh, you can still see the difference from white and gray. There's still some spots of gunk that uh, are caught in the folds of the piping, but it's pretty darn clean. Water was gushing through there pretty quickly, whereas before there was quite a bit of gunk. Not enough to, I don't believe, cause uh, slowing of the drainage that much. For the error code but we'll see either way it's clean now and regardless of whether or not it ends up being a new pump needed at least i have peace of mind that the new pump will be going in with cleaned out everything all right now once you've removed the pump once you've drained the water from the coin catch removed the pump You'll then come to the rear with the panel removed and access the clamp, which the unlocking tongs here are facing the rear, so you can't do it from the front. So you remove the back panel and with pliers, you depress and this whole gasket comes off. This was the front connection to the rear of the pump that you had removed earlier. And I've already cleaned it out. There wasn't a whole lot of gunk for me, but two issues that can be found here is tons of gunk blocking the water passage, or some people reported that their ball had a hole was filling up with water and no longer floating up to the top like this. 
it was staying down, falling down heavy once filled with water and clogging, clogging the connection, not allowing water to drain out. So if your ball doesn't have any water in it, it feels hollow, once you clean it off, it will be dirty and gunky. If it looks fine, that won't be your problem. If you don't have a whole lot of gunk in here, clean it out regardless. But most likely, this won't be your problem either. And we will move on to the last spot to check for gunk possibly clogging up and causing the error codes. Be right back to show you that. So here is the washing machine with the back removed. A simple uh, four on each side, screws, one on the top, one on the bottom. Simple to remove and I'll show you now what might be the culprit. Just reposition myself one moment. All right. So right here, it's a semi-transparent uh, white plastic. I can already see the dark shading. There's most likely a bunch of gunk inside. That, uh, that comes from the, the drum. This is a channel, the water passes through and it switches to a black hose. That hose runs up all the way up a switch right up in there and if the switch doesn't get enough water flow it'll trigger the suds code because it alerts the, uh, the switch that water is draining too slowly and if water doesn't drain at a certain rate it'll trigger that error code so I'm going to remove that it's one simple torque screw right here and it just pulls off there's a bit of a, there's a clip under here I'm gonna put the camera down and I'll come back with the screw removed and uh, show you what's inside one more instruction before I remove that little torque screw it's with a regular size screwdriver and it's a Torx 10 T10 wasn't enough room to get in and I was trying to unscrew it on an angle would eventually strip that little screw and I'm sure it'd be hard to get another so remove this lateral bar in addition to the back plate there's one screw on each side it'll take two seconds it's a slight angle on the torque screw but it slipped twice in the first two turns trying to remove the screw so I'm gonna remove that and continue ahead I should have removed that beam before my previous video so you can see much better in here I'll be removing that torque screw and there's a green wire there's a wire here that snapped in here and underneath just unsnap it because this whole piece will come loose when the screw and clip is undone you don't want to put any undue pressure on that, that wire. I'll be back once I remove that screw and have, have this piece removed for you to see. All right, I removed the screw. You can see there's also a clip down where it attaches, it connects. Taking that out, this black hose runs up along the side of the machine connects to the switch which sits right up in here up against it's clipped into the frame with this small push clip and there's a wire connection to unplug I took it all out as one piece and then carefully slid off the hose from the switch and now I'm left with the full hollow contraption that I can run water through and clean out. Fortunately the 
dark hue I saw through the transparent plastic didn't turn out to be all that gucky. It wasn't jammed at all, but I'm gonna rinse it out. I'm not thinking that this was the culprit, but from what people describe online, they've had success and they've had tons of gunk in this one piece, restricting water flow to the switch, which has caused their F02 suds error. So that's why I wanted to show this because people have talked about it, but nobody, there was no pictures or videos. And uh, hopefully this gives you an idea of what you're tackling. Definitely worth it before buying a new pump. Make sure that this isn't the culprit. All right. Apologize for uh, some background noise, but the furnace just kicked in here in this small room. Hopefully the audio is all right. And uh, I want to report some good news. We've had success. Even though at every stage of cleaning out every piece, I reported probably wasn't enough gunk to cause a blockage. That most people in, in their blogs reported much more gunk than I had seen. Just by cleaning out each and every one of those pieces, putting all back together, the machine is working perfectly. When it gets to the drain cycle, I hear the pump kick in, purring nice and loud. And I'd like to say that it's probably draining quicker than it was before. So guys, before you invest in a new pump, definitely before you call a technician, it's just a few screws at the front and a few at the back. You might have to invest in a, in a torque screwdriver if you don't have that to remove one or two specialty screws, but that's just a few dollars. And if you have gunk blocking any of those, points that I addressed, then you've most likely solved your problem. I didn't even have that. I just had some goo lining the interior walls of those pieces, and that was enough to slow down the drainage to the point where the switch triggered the suds error code. It wasn't draining fast enough for the machine, and for safety reasons, it shut off. So guys, try all this. Please, if it helped you out, leave a comment, let me know. I'd love to hear your success story. And uh, I don't do too many of these videos. I, I try when I can, if I think it's gonna help somebody. Mostly I'm posting uh, videos of my bike packing and hiking adventures and uh, really trying to get my subscribers up. So hey, if you can help a brother out and subscribe, man, that would be awesome. Love to see those numbers go up if there's some people who find this video helpful. All right, cheers.